He's a chef and he's a true poet in two languages, as you will hear my job here, and I'm not gonna be pushy, but he said that if he messes anything up, I have to be like a game show and tell him the right word, so I'm not being a jerk. <laughs> Thank you, chef. Christine. <laughs> um, you know, as uh, every French guy, my English is horrible. 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 <laughs> <laughs> But I'm trying, so I can't speak really, but I'm going to... Try. To try. <laughs> Dear young chefs from all corners of the world, I would like to salute you. And I would like to express my honor and my gratitude for being here today. Thank you, René. And thank you for all your team not only for having invited me here, but more especially for having created this space for meeting and sharing in which spirit and reflection are more present than culinary performance. We are all little heirs of the grand history of humanity. Question, what is cooking? Or another question, how to feed, nor to die? First, I will try to tell you a bit about my personal story. Second, my need to draw upon historical ref references. Third, my need to give meaning to life as well to cuisine so that it becomes a medium of expression. And finally, the duties and the freedoms of world chefs. I consider myself lucky to have been born in Cancale, a small fishing port in Brittany, in France, in a house that was built by a family of space merchants. In the beginning of the 18th century, I grew up listening the songs, two songs about the open sea and hearing about extraordinary tales of boats that had come back from India and from Americas. Because my parents were part of the provincial bourgeoisie. They had people over dinner nearly every evening, most likely to forget about the difficult years of the Second World War. My mother cooked a lot, but I would always eat in the kitchen because it was not, I was not allowed to eat at the dinner with the adult. It was a beautiful childhood, during which I never had to pick up a conch shell to listen to the sea. We could all just run down the street and hear it dancing and singing in our ears. We learn how to school. Skull, row. Skull in about, even before we learn how to ride bicycles. But at the age of 13, my father abandoned my mother and I. And the clothes and the house closed upon like a clam. As a teenager, without much parental guidance, I was ready and willing to get into any sort of trouble I could. Everything, everything from taking off on my motor bicycle to explore Eastern Europe as a communist, to hopping, hopping on a boat and racing against our friends, say English. I did, however, always make sure to study so that my mother would not be upset. I studied chemistry but was stopped short as the victim of a homicide attempt. 
Five young people tried to kill me by hitting me with a crowbar. It was a gratuitous act of violence like in the clockwork orange. <laughs> Several operations later, not knowing if I would work again or not, just laying there, looking up at the hospital selling for hours on end. I was 10, 20 years old and I promised to myself to construct my second life under the motto, forever young. Mm. Mm. I'm never an adult. <laughs> During two years of uh, physiotherapy with a total loss of interest for the sciences and a rejection of Cartesian rationalism. Every night at the weekend, my old school friends who had become fishermen, oyster farmers, and farmers, along with those, um, along with those who had become students. Yes, scientists. Would meet at the house to cheer me up. My mom began cooking again, and the house came alive as it had been before. Oysters, mussels, prawns, lobster, crabs, jandori, bass, sole, albalone, salt feet lamb, small potatoes, leeks, artichokes, asparagus from the Mont Saint Michel Bay. <laughs> All this came through our kitchen. After two years, my desire to leave bounds back. I wanted to tell stories of the joy of living between the sea and the sky. But I was neither a painter nor a musician, and even less a writer. Not true. Writer. <laughs> Very good. Excuse You're me. hired. I was, a, <laughs> I was just a scientist. I understood. I understood that sharing my joy for life would mean opening my home and my table. But I had never touched a pot. I was 24 years old, but my second source of motivation came when I met Jane, my wife. <laughs> Since then, nothing would stop me from completely expressing the joy of living in this small port of Brittany. For more than 35 years, I have been trying to communicate this story, the enchanting spell of the Mont Saint-Michel Bay, the beliefs of an old Celtic Brittany, and the history of maritime adventure that the Corsair city of Saint-Malo was built upon. Corsair. Corsair. It's not pirate. It's Corsair. Not a pirate. We have a long discussion about long. it. Yeah, kind of like. <laughs> You're a Corsair. It's a pirate. No, I'm not pirates. <laughs> As a French, I have a king and a god. <laughs> Pir pirates are nothing. But only freedom. <laughs> To give you a better idea of my spirit, of my culinary style, I will describe the creation of my first dish, which I designed in 1982, the year when we first, with Jane, we, we, we first opened the doors of the Maison de Bricourt. A friend's brother had just finished his thesis on the French East Indian Company. He had started telling me of how the 17th and the 18th century merchant ships would come back to Saint Malo from all the corners of the world, they were full of spices. And I'm going to open some little boxes. Some, some of these would come from China. Like honey star? Star anise. Star anise, excuse Sorry. me. Uh, Sichuan pepper, fleur de lys. 
and also came from the Malaku Islands, such as cloves or mace and cloves and ma uh, mace and cloves. Some of them come uh, from Middle East, like uh, cumin and coriander. Some of them come from this great country, India, to find first the black pearl, the black pepper, cardamom, cinnamon, turmeric, and ginger. Also, there were the ones that came from the Americas, such as chili, chili picking, this one. The best one, one of the best one, favorite. And vanilla, of course, for the Chinantle forest in Mexico. <laughs> I don't hear Chinese people <laughs> when I speak. Like. So at the end of the 17th century, the globalization of the flavors had already occurred within the walls of San Malo, while elsewhere, people who didn't have timekeepers were still unable to know their position on the open sea. You can imagine. I wanted to pay homage to this whole human adventure when I made my first dish. I used the John Dory that my fisherman friends had been bringing me every morning, the cabbage that my farmer's friends had grown me near the Mont Saint-Michel Bay, and a mix of 14 spices that I created and refined as I went along, very slowly, because I did, I, I did not know, no, I knew nothing. On my very first menu, I wrote Saint-Pierre Retour des Indes, which roughly translates to John Dory back from the Indies. But it's not from India. It's from the East Indies and West Indies. With it, I just define the frame of my creativity. It's very important, I think, to, have, to get, as uh, Alain um, told us, <laughs> to get the frame of the creation. Each person, each, each, each way, we, we, we had to find it. Expressing my natural environment at its freshest, the freshest of fish, the freshest of harvests, and recognizing the contribution of the men and women who produce them. Expressing my cultural environment in evoking the history of maritime adventures that in Saint Malo and Brittany and France, in using all the world's spices and treasures brought down by Celtic chimney as treasures. Like a nose in the perfumes univers, we have created more than 30 blends of spices. People in the region understood almost immediately what I was getting at, and that it was their history that I was communicating. However, the culinary journalist took <laughs> quite a while to understand what I was doing. <laughs> and in particular, the people at Michelin. Why would I ever use spices that were unknown to traditional Brittany cuisine? They would ask. Some thought that my spices were even polluting French cuisine itself. And it was a fight with Alain Sodrens, with other friends, to go against this conservatism of the French politics and meaning. And then the Goemio talks and the Michelin star still arrive. For the Goemio in 1994, two Michelin star in 1988, and three Michelin star in 2006. 18 years after the second one. That's almost a generation alive. <laughs> after that, unfortunately, because uh, of health problem, I had to close a three-star restaurant. I couldn't do the same work anymore. With Jane and all the crew, 
we decide to continue with the Maison de Bricourt, but with a little difference. We develop the second table, le coquillage, in an effort to provide an unpretentious, healthy, elegant, generous, and joyful style of cuisine, more free. It is more complicated than getting three Michelin stars. <laughs> but it is also, it's, it, but which is definitely more interesting. With my team, I continue to design new dishes, but I can't interpret them by myself anymore. Also, with Jane, we decide to try to give something back to the men and women who make our unique style of cuisine possible. The small-scale growers of pepper, cardamom, cinnamon, and vanilla, and all the other spices that had grown anonymous, an anonymous, oh. anonymously. Anonym Anonymously. Anonymously. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Today, we buy, we buy them more than 40 tons of spices for a price which is higher than the fair trade price. All of our spices are delivered to Cancal, to the old Swiss star kitchens, where they are roast, ground, steamed, and mixed and then made into our signature spice blends. These blends, which reflect my Brittany-born French palate, allow people from all walks of life to sing their own song in the kitchen, mm. and not necessarily with spices or hot exotic cooking. Every morning, our blends are delivered all over the world. A recap. <laughs> I am happy to have been forced to transmit my knowledge to my chefs. And it's very exciting every morning to translate, to, 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 to share, to transmit. I feel more useful in sharing my knowledge with thousands of people all over the world, the people who use my signature spices blends and who are intimately linked to the small scale growers who are so often forgotten as well as those who love cooking with the best produce. This historical reference of oceanic spice roots during the age of the discovery are my first source of inspiration. They allow me to design for today and to catch a glimpse of the future. The basis for my creativity is the history of the maritime adventure, which is entirely linked to the 70th and 18th century quest for spices. But my interest in the subject goes beyond just the discovery of the ocean, Professor. It is really about the question of why people have valued spices so much. Something that goes all the way back to the age of Egyptian pharaohs. This question fascinates me. But I don't have time to answer it today. <laughs> the important thing for every one of us is not to spread ourselves too thinly. Don't make the fly. You understand? Don't make, don't make the fly. Yeah. Don't make the fly. Don't make the fly. And, and, and don't be like a fly don't, going don't, everywhere. Don't. don't, don't uh, <laughs> I try to work in harmony and in resonance with these places on this planet without saying too much about it to people who come to taste my cuisine. Sometimes, in wanting to justify and explain everything, we end up forgetting what the most important part is. Pleasure and taste. Often think that we are in a transition period for two culinary expressions to answer your question, René. <laughs> After technical super performance and all its scientific accent, and everything that is so much more than natural and local, can't we just make our way back to the basic of cuisine itself? That is the nourishment of other people, linking a rigorous focus on taste 
and the present knowledge of health. In an effort to redefine what good really means. Maybe that means even calling apart our prim primal instincts. As the painter Paul Gauguin did when he painted between impressionism and abstraction. What is about the future of an, an abstract cuisine? I can cook elsewhere than in this region of farmers and fishermen and sea adventure. As to the question of how I situate myself as regards French cuisine, I have always answered that I feel closer to the chefs of the sea and the ocean than to the chefs in Burgundy. Out near the sea, just as in this Viking territory that is Denmark, all of us look out, out to the horizon, the infinite. This horizon that pulls and that pulls on us like a magnet out to the beyond. The sea is a convenior, conven, convenior belt. A convenior belt. Convenior belt. Thank you, René. Bringing humans together while the earth separates. In looking at the sea, we wonder if we have just arrived. But we know that we could leave tomorrow. On wood, a mast, and a piece of a sail. This ocean is our most beautiful pantry, but it is often in danger. All along the cliff sides are wild herbs and seaweed. And sheltered from the wind, a little kitchen garden. And then there is this constant desire to leave in order to come back someone better, or of this message in a bottle that can land at your feet and in your kitchen, containing seeds, bark, leaves, and roots, all from another coastline with another sun. In reality, just like music, painting, and literature, cuisine doesn't have a border or a national flag. Cuisine is something else. Cuisine is something different from football. <laughs> Some people say that it is a minor heart, but close to the poetry, but which plays the fundamental role of extending life in every corner of the planet. That's a very special thing for this art or minor art, doesn't care. To conclude, to conclude, I have spoken to you about my culinary Commitments, having been elected by the 520 Relais Chateau chefs from 62 different nations in the world that despite my pitiful level of English, <laughs> I will tell you, I will tell you off a few of my convictions. Today, cuisine is a subject of, wor of worldwide importance, caught at the crossroads of social, economic, and environmental issues. We, and especially you, your generation, are the actors in this significant time in which chefs can influence the world for a better future. Mm. 
We must, we must influence the distribution of wealth by buying directly from the growers themselves. We must, we must influence nature so that it is not destroyed by overproduction. We must, we must influence the preservation of the biodiversity of animal species. 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 We must influence the preservation of the biodiversity of fruits and vegetables. But above and beyond all that, influence the recognition of the cultural differences on our planet. Chefs, chefs must sustainably develop their respective regions in the overall effort to improve the world. We are all involved in promoting responsible, responsible culinary tourism, so through tradition, some which more avant-garde, but all of them brought by your terroir and a sincerity. I have almost finished. <laughs> In the world village that we are, we must position ourselves against the junk food, but also against the mediocre standardization of international gastronomy, which calls itself a luxury product. We have to free world chefs so they can realize free their most intimate cuisine. We must associate ourselves with the producer, the growers, and the fishermen all over the planet, so to protect humanity's pantry, which is nature, and more specif specifically, the ocean. We must support fair trade, promote knowledge, and fight against wastage. We must reconcile the city and the countryside. We must reconcile the poor and the rich. Finally, from the most simple to the most refined of cuisine, from the most traditional to the most creative, we must, each and every one of us, protect and promote the diversity of cuisines and forms of hospitality everywhere in the world. They are the material heritage of humanity. Chefs, all over the world must join the movement for humanity to feed itself better. What is cooking? That's the question. Since politicians, politicians never take responsibilities, it is up to us, chefs, yo. <laughs> this is a huge opportunity for us to build a new world, more human, more equitable, more healthfully, with more pleasure and happiness. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, René, to have done this. Thank you, all your volunteers that are here today and tomorrow. And thank you, finally, mad on you. <laughs>